Mr. Richmond, this is Integrated Math 2, Unit 13.1 Lesson Summary. In Unit 13 here, Math 2, we're going to now start transitioning into polynomials instead of just quadratic functions, functions that can have powers that are even higher than, say, x squared. We can go into x cubed, x to the fourth. Um, and we're going to focus on kind of the proper way to write these, how to identify and name them. And then a little later on, we're going to talk about how to factor um, polynomials like this and, and potentially and eventually solve them. So for now, let's talk about um, how to name these. It's going to be pretty uh, vocab dominant. So what is a polynomial? A polynomial is a mathematical expression involving the sum of powers in one or more variables multiplied by coefficients. So this here would be a type of polynomial. I have different powers, x squared, x to the first, and I have terms with no x's. I call these constants. These are called constants when it doesn't have a variable. So this is a type of polynomial. 2x squared minus 6 is a type of polynomial. Um, as are these, okay? What is a term? Term is each product in a polynomial expression. So I'm going to use these as kind of my examples. Negative x squared is a term. 5x is a term. Negative 12 is a term. You can identify terms because they're always separated by some form of addition or subtraction, okay? 2x squared is a term because it's all multiplied together into 1. Negative 6 is a term. 3x to the fourth is a term. 3x squared is a term. Negative 3 is a term, etc. What is a coefficient? A coefficient is any number being multiplied by a power within a polynomial expression. So a coefficient is that number being multiplied to a variable in its power. My coefficient here for x squared, negative 1. My coefficient here for x, 5. My coefficient here for 12, well, there is no variable, so negative 12 is the constant there, not really a coefficient. Coefficient here, 2, 3, 3. No variable, no coefficient. Six, negative nine, no variable, no coefficient. Okay, what is the degree of a term? A degree of a term is the exponent of a term in a polynomial. So if I ask you, what's the degree of this term? Well, it's x squared, so the degree is two. What's the degree of this term? Well, the x doesn't have it, but it does have one. You know, write the exponent for one, so it's technically a degree of one. Negative 12 has no variable. That's actually a degree of zero, because there's no variable, the variable's gone. Uh, degree here, 2, 0, 4, 2, 0, 5, 3, 0. So it's all dependent on the, the exponent of the variable. Now, what's the degree of a polynomial, the entire thing? Well, the degree of the entire thing is the term with the greatest exponent. So what's the degree here? 1, because that has the highest. 0, because there's no variables at all. Here it's 2, because we have 2 and 1. But 2 is the highest, so this has a degree of 2. Here, highest one is two, so a degree is two. This one, highest degree is two, so a degree is two. Here, I actually go as high as four, so this has a degree of four as the polynomial. And this parentheses has a highest degree of five, meaning it has a fifth degree as the polynomial. Okay? Now, we can also classify uh, name-wise based on how many terms it has. We can classify it by the degree, and I'll talk about that more in a second, as well as the terms. So the degrees, first of all, is, is pretty straightforward. If it has no variables, it's a, called a constant. If it has one variable, x, like it does here, we call that linear. You've seen linear equations before, x to the one power. So if that's the highest degree, it's called linear. If it has a two, a two degree, it's called quadratic. And then I don't think you'll see much more beyond that at this point. But in case you do, um, a third degree is called a cubic. Fourth degree is called a quartic, and a fifth degree is called a quintic. Again, I don't think you're going to run into those, but in case you do. Now, we can also classify the number of terms. If it has only one term, it's a monomial. Keyword, mono, meaning one. Binomial is for two terms. Keyword, bi, bicycle, two wheels, two terms. And a trinomial, three terms, keyword tri, tricycle, three wheels, tri meaning three. So easy way to kind of remember those. And I'm going to show you how to name them in a moment. Okay, now that we have the vocab down, let's take a look at an example or two. It says write each polynomial in standard form, then classify it by its number of terms and its degree. If the expression is not a polynomial, explain why not. So standard form, you learned this back in chapter 12. But the way you write something in standard form is you go highest degree to lowest. So x has a degree of 1, a constant has no degree, so standard form for this would look like that. 
4x plus 6. Then it says name it by its number of terms and its degree. Well, it has two terms, two terms being bi, so it's a binomial. And its highest degree is 1, which makes it linear. So this is a linear binomial. So just like you have a first and last name, these polynomials have a first and last name. First name based on their degree, second name based on their number of terms. Now 17 is only a single term, so it, its standard form is just 17. Okay, variable wise it doesn't have any. If it doesn't have any variables, it's just called a constant because there's no change in it whatsoever. It stays 17 forever. So that's called a constant, and because it only has one term, it's a monomial. So it's a constant monomial. Now, our key here to be a polynomial is it had to be a mathematical, mathematical expression involving the sum of powers in one or more variables, um, with the variables being the thing raised to a power. Here it's kind of reversed. My, my variable's up here. This is actually not a type of polynomial. Um, there's no other terms being added. You've never really seen this. Um, this is called an exponential. Um, so this is... Um, not a polynomial. Doesn't have the same forms as all others. And the reason why um, is because this is actually exponential. Some other ones they can throw your way that aren't polynomials are something like an absolute value function. Um, and that'd probably be it. I can't think of a whole lot else they could throw at you at this point that you would have seen and know is not polynomial. Okay? And how about this one, 4x squared plus 2x plus 1, written in standard form. They're so nice, it's actually already written that way. They have the highest power first, then the next power, and then 2x plus 1. So that is already in standard form. But if the 1 was first or the 4x squared was last, I would have to rearrange that. How do I name this? Well, I look for the highest degree first. 0, 1, 2. So it's a second degree, x squared, which we call a quadratic. We know that from last chapter. And it has three terms this time. Three terms is tri. So it's a quadratic trinomial. Okay? So it's just a matter of practicing basically these vocab words to name it. Um, the only other skill you really have to have from this very first section, this intro section 13.1, is how to add and subtract uh, these polynomials and combine them into one. So when we have two different polynomials that we want to add together, you want to bring them together, condense them into one. Now, a lot of times they do this. They write them in parentheses. Don't let that confuse you. It's not really necessary all the time to have the parentheses. It's just so you can see that there is indeed two different things we're adding. Because it's adding, all I have to do is combine like terms. And so if you remember what, how like terms work, um, math is kind of racist in addition to subtraction. We've talked about this before, I think, on one of my other videos. Um, they don't get along. Addition and subtraction don't get along. They have to be exactly the same to want to add together. So if I'm x squared, you also have to be x squared. You have to have the same power as me to even get along. If you're a completely different variable, I won't add with you. So what I usually do is identify the common terms. Negative x squared can be added with 2x squared. So I like to underline it. Negative x squared is negative 1x squared plus 2x squared is 1x squared. And so I've combined those like terms. Now I'm going to look for the next set of like terms. 5x is a single x term, one degree, so it can only combine with other regular x's. And there are no others in the problem, so nothing's going to happen to 5x. It's just going to stay what it is. There's no change to it. My last term is negative 12, which is a constant, so it can only combine with other constants. Negative 12 and negative 6 would make negative 18. And a lot of times, if you do it by trying to identify the like terms in order from highest degree to lowest, not only did you combine like terms, you've now kept your answer in standard form, which is how your teacher's going to want to see that final answer. Okay? So adding can be pretty simple. Subtraction can get tricky. Okay? Here I have a polynomial being subtracted and then another polynomial. Here's the tricky thing. I'm subtracting each of these. And a lot of students will just get rid of the parentheses and write minus 6x to the fifth. But that's not actually what hap is happening. I'm subtracting 6x to the fifth. I'm subtracting negative 9x cubed, which is actually, when you subtract a negative, changing it to addition. And then I'm subtracting a 2. So anytime you have a negative involving parentheses, distribution is required. So on the subtraction ones, you're going to have one extra step of distributing the negative. The first polynomial can write itself. Negative times 6x fifth is negative 6x to the fifth. 
negative times 9x, negative 9x cubed is positive 9x cubed, and negative times 2 is a negative 2. And so make sure you take that negative and change all the signs. And now I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to combine like terms. Now, I want it to end up in standard form, so I'm going to do it in order. I'm going to find my highest power first. 4, 2, 0, 5, 3, 2. Or sorry, 5, 3, 0. So this is my highest degree, x to the fifth. And I have no other x to the fifth to combine it with. So he's just going to come down and be negative 6x to the fifth. Now I'll look for degree of 4. 3x to the fourth has nothing to combine with, so it too, it's positive this time, can just come down and be 3x to the fourth. Now I'll do cubes. I have 9x cubed. Mm. It also has nothing to combine with, so it's 9x cubed. Next will be squares. It's my fourth one I'm trying, so I'll do four lines. Wow, they're making this really easy on us, aren't they? Again, nothing to combine it with, so 3x squared. Regular x's. I got none of those. Last thing, constant. Constant, negative 3 and negative 2 makes negative 5. So I really only had to combine one thing on that problem. Made it pretty straightforward. So I have a pretty nice looking polynomial there. Negative 6x to the fifth plus 3x to the fourth plus 9x cubed plus 3x squared minus 5. Now, probably won't have to name anything like that, but let's give it a shot. Just as extra kind of bonus credit. My highest degree, 5, makes it a quintic. And the number of terms is actually 5. So what do I call that? We had a monomial for one term, a, a binomial for two terms, and a trinomial for three. So what do you call something with five terms? Well, anything that's over three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc., just means a lot, many terms. Well, that's what poly means. It means many. So if you're ever above three terms, you just call it a polynomial. So I would call that a quintic polynomial. Okay, hopefully this helps with this intro section. Just be careful about the subtracting polynomials that distributing the negative can be tricky. If you don't make that mistake, you ace that section. Do it to it.